Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we want to wish you all a beautiful, holy week. Here we are. We made it. Now, we want to hear from you today, so we're taking your questions and your comments. If you're watching, it's live. It's Monday. Please give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you are calling and you are outside North America, you can reach us at 205 271 2980. And you can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. So in this beautiful Holy Week, this was the question we asked you. What are some of the most meaningful and inspiring moments for you during Holy Week? So here we are as we're preparing. We know the schedule that is before us, that's set before us. I pray that you all had a beautiful Palm Sunday this weekend. And what are you looking forward to? You know what's ahead. You know what's before us. And we're excited to hear your comments and your questions. Well, the Feast of the Annunciation would normally be today. But due to Holy Week, it's been moved to Monday, April Eighth. So we wanted to just give you all a heads up on that. Yeah. And what is the Feast of the Annunciation, right? So it's nine months before Christmas. The angel of the Lord comes and yes. says to me, that's when she conceives. So it's interesting to how we're going to calculate that because it's a little bit different. But traditionally it is, yeah, you, ske you mm -hmm. schedule Christmas by the Annunciation. Yes. Yeah. And Joy, we wanted to mention a, a new book out. It's called The Story of the First Easter Bunny, available at EWTNRC.com. Another wonderful book by Anthony DeStefano. You just can't miss with Anthony. I did get to read that through. I don't know if you got to take some time and do that. But, but the graphs are just you know, unbelievable. And how we connect the Easter Bunny mm -hmm. with uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that's worth uh, ordering and finding out how to do that. So go to EWTNRC.com. But Joy, regarding the question again? Yes. We really do want to hear from you. And uh, if you would just you know, email us or Facebook us or call us, it'd be great. What are some of the most meaningful and inspiring moments of you, for you during Holy Week? And so this could take in a number of things. As you said, Joy, the liturgies um, of, of Holy Week, especially uh, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, um, and, and this whole week. Uh, so what is it about those liturgies that really move you Maybe it's not about the liturgies. Maybe it's just about biblical reading, mm -hmm. the readings during that whole week mm -hmm. uh, and what's touching you in those, in those readings. And maybe it's something beyond uh, anything that's uh, from Scripture or from the liturgies. It might be a recalling of when you came into the church or you're looking forward to coming to the church, that this was the week some years ago when you came into the church. And I think we heard somebody speak mm -hmm. about that. Another person spoke about, uh, I love the Good Friday liturgy and what I love about it is when I can come forward and and kiss Jesus like so that's that's the exaltation of the cross right and so you usually On have Good the crucified Friday. Christ mm -hmm. that is moving to come mm -hmm. up and, and and you get to kiss his feet or wherever you kiss him and some, for somebody that just brings it home that's what we're talking about what's coming home to you what's what's moving you what's meaningful in years past or what you're looking forward to regarding this holy holy week of the passion leading up to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You're walking with Christ now. You're walking down the Via Della Rosa. You're with him at the Last Supper. You're with Judas. Mm -hmm. Today we're, we're with, with Mary of Bethany who anoints the Lord's feet and dries it with her hair. I mean, what's happening? What's happening to you? And will you obey the call to deny yourself, take up the cross and follow Jesus? I've left you an example that you should follow in my steps. We're so glad to share this Holy Week with you. Give us a call, participate. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, remember that today we're taking your questions and your comments on our show. Please give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460 
or outside North America, 205-271-2980. You can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. So these are the questions. What are some of the most meaningful and inspiring moments for you during Holy Week? As you journey in your parish down the Via Della Rosa, what are you looking forward to? And remember, you can go always go to EWTN.com forward slash Holy Week for an ebook on praying the scriptural rosary, the sorrowful mysteries. Enjoy that site is fantastic. Yes. Okay, EW10.com forward slash Holy Week has everything you need regarding Holy Week, what it's about. It's such a great piece for instruction mm -hmm. for you individually as a couple, for your family, and uh, it gives you the whole programming for Holy Week. And I think EW10, I know EW10 has been running that, that kind of, that site and sharing, you know, visually how important this is. And, you know, over the weekend, it was a real blessing for me just to keep EWTN on all the time, mm -hmm. uh, except when it was cutting out because of a technology problem in right. our community. And I just thought, I was so grateful for EW10 because I was just in that spirit mm -hmm. of this week, uh, of Holy Week, of breaking away from the world. And EW10 is just feeding you so, so much teaching, so many images, different parts of the world. And it's just the way it should be. And everything is just getting quieter and quieter. Mm. And we need help with that. And EW10 does that. And that was happening for me as I transitioned back to EW10. That's happening for me now. If we don't do this show anymore at some mm -hmm. point, we'll be doing the same thing that we're mm -hmm. doing with EW10. So we thank God for, for your commitment to the network. Well, and I pray that as you're moving through this Holy Week, that there are moments in the Holy Week that you really are looking forward to. Um, we love Holy Thursday. We love Good Friday. For I'm a convert, so it's an anniversary for me you on Holy in. Saturday. Yeah. And um, that's my favorite Mass of the year. Yeah. Um, and I look forward to that. But, you know, I went to a different church on Sunday. I was out of town. So Saturday night, I went to a different church, and I didn't bring my Magnificat with me, which is what I, I did bring, and I brought the wrong one right. for Holy Week. And so I just sat there, I was like, okay, Lord. And so we were going through the reading. And you know the only one I really, really got was when the crowd shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Mm -hmm. I was like, and yeah, you, I know that one. And you were part of the crowd. And I was part yeah. of the crowd. And this church was packed, so there, were, there wasn't another missile to share. Yeah. And you, so I just entered in mm -hmm. with great sorrow that, yes, mm -hmm. that was my participation. Yeah. And I said, now, Lord, just I, I so looked forward to receiving him in the Eucharist that I would enter into this beautiful journey. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of the liturgy and the seasons and the rhythm of the Catholic Church, that we go through it, that we as we go through Lent, and I said this from the beginning when Lent started, that the Lenten journey becomes at the end that there's a visible, intentional witness of more of Jesus inside of you and less of you. More of Jesus, less of you. What are you dying to? What okay. vices are you getting rid of? What virtues are increasing inside of you? Those are the things that we are to be encountering, whether it's through readings <laughs> or silence. Um, like you said, you kept it on EWTN. It is March Madness. There is a lot of basketball playing. But you still have to um, detach from this world during this week. Um, the world is not going to advertise it. You will see an explosion of the Easter bunny and Easter eggs and all those things. And you think, and yeah. you, you do, you kind of think, am I in another yeah. planet? Yeah. Like, is this who died for my sins? And so you have to be intentional in your formation. And I strongly encourage that you keep it on EW10. If you can go <laughs> to church, go to church and, and participate yeah. as much as you can yeah. on the Via Della Rosa in your own yeah. and, life and, and maybe, soul. you know, it's not, it's not an obligation to go on Holy Thursday. I like to call it Monday, Thursday, Mundatin Day, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I've loved you, or Good Friday, which is amazing to me. Well, I'm not, I don't make the rules in the church. Mm -hmm. It seems like Friday should be a holy day of obligation, but they're not. So therefore, may maybe if you've never made one of those, make it this time if you can, you know, and, and do that and, and go. We have a, uh, something here, oh, quote, 
The holy sufferings of Jesus is a sea of sorrows, but it is also a sea of love. Ask the Lord to teach you to fish in the sea. Immerse yourself in it and know no matter how deeply you go, you will never reach the bottom. Mm, mm. Allow yourself to be penetrated with love and sorrow. In this way, you will make the sufferings of the gentle Jesus your own. Fish for the pearls of the virtues, as you were saying, mm -hmm. Joy, the virtues of Jesus. This holy fishing is done without words. Mm -hmm. Saint Paul of the cross, that's powerful. Right. So in, in that sea, in what are they today? Sufferings mm -hmm. and great love. That's what this time is about. Great, unfathomable sufferings, but deeper still the love of God. What a great faith the Christian faith is, the Catholic faith and traditions in particular, that it really does understand the world and, and the flesh and the devil, but Christ's victory over the flesh and the world and the devil, the joys, the sorrows, where you're going fishing. So we're fishing this week, not only for souls, but for that which life is made up of and that Jesus entered into every aspect of life. He bore every, every sin and has overcome every sin, exhausted. We give in to sin more quickly Jesus never gave in, so he saw it to the greatest extent, and he conquered it. Mm. He has swallowed up death. He swallowed up the grave. Not yet, right, because we're in the passion. Mm -hmm. So we've got to go through this week, and Jesus has to go through this week. And it's beautiful that on this Monday of this week, we said Mary of Bethany, he went to a home. He loved going to Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Lazarus this is after his resurrection now. Right. So he goes there for community, for fellowship, because he knows what's coming down mm -hmm. this week. He wants to surround himself with his dearly beloved friends. Right. Right? And Mary of Bethany does this great act of love mm -hmm. where she takes this expensive ointment and pours it upon his feet and dries it with her hair. So that, mm -hmm. this is today. So we're going through what is Monday, what's Tuesday, what's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And... And who's there? Judas is there. Mm -hmm. He says, this should not be done. This ointment needs to be saved. It needs to be sold and, and money given to the poor. But he said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he had hold of the treasury. Mm -hmm. And he was stealing from the treasury. So you got this great act by Mary of Bethany. You got Judas. And now we get into all the characters. Like you said, the reading of the Passion on Palm Sunday. Mm -hmm. A lot of people pop up and show up. Judas is big in that. Pilate is big in that. Peter is big in that. And denying the Lord. You have Holy Week in one reading mm -hmm. on, on Palm Sunday. Yes. Because people don't go to, sometimes don't go to Monday, mm -hmm. Thursday, Holy Friday. So you, you kind of get it. And then finally we go into uh, the Easter Vigil and Easter, which is a whole nother season. Mm -hmm. It's really not, in a sense, Holy Week. With someone, here's a comment. It says, during Holy Week, I always love contemplating Christ's sufferings. It brings my mind and heart to the most powerful and all-encompassing love that he had for us. It wraps my grief, it wraps my heart into grief, but also knowing the joy that will follow. And this is from Judy on Facebook. You know, and I, um, I was away this weekend and I was with some of my family members and um, my one brother had to fly home to New Jersey. And before he was going, he was, um, he doesn't like flying. So he was really, you know, he just has anxiety about it. So I said to Michael, I said, Michael, you know, it's like our faith journey. Jesus isn't going to take away the plane ride. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't take away the crosses. Just like Jesus cried in the garden of Gethsemane, oh, Father, if you want this, pass to cup from, this cup to pass from me, let it be done. But if not, thy will be done. Yeah. So I said to Michael, as he's getting ready to go on the plane, I said, I'm just going to teach you a prayer that will help you through your journey, but you got to get on the plane. And it's almost like, and sometimes this cross has to come to us. Yeah. And I said, you have to tell Jesus, Jesus, I trust in you. Take care of everything. It's yeah. a surrender prayer. Yeah. G and, and say it. And Lord say, Jesus, I surrender myself yes. to you. Take care of mm -hmm. everything is right. another way of saying mm -hmm. it. Right? And I, I, I always add lots of little verses to it. I've yeah. been doing it on the uh, Hallow app too. 
And so he just kind of like looked at me. He's this big strapling construction guy. And I said, it might help, but you got to get on that plane. Yeah. And so I called him afterwards and I said, how did your plane ride go? And actually it was a very good plane ride for him. So, so that's what Holy Week is about. It's about our crosses mm -hmm. that we have to encounter. It's about the sorrows of this life that, that they get laid upon us mm -hmm. and that we have to suffer in our sorrows. But the faith journey is God's going to come up alongside of us. He's going to give us all the grace. He's going to give us all the courage. He's going to give us all the strength Jesus, to endure. Yeah. That's what he will do. And he will get us through our own personal Via Della Rosa. As that's, that's what we're to be doing. We're to put, be putting ourselves in those scenes and then to understand and comprehend as if our feeble mind could actually yeah, understand his love, Amen. his extravagant mercy, and his love, abundance of love that none of us can ever plummet. We have Judy from Facebook. Let's see her comment if we can. Here we go. She says this, <clears throat> I always treasure the bells during the Gloria on Holy Thursday in Easter Vigil. And that was from Anne. Now, Joan from Rome always tells us, if once in your lifetime, if you can ever get to Rome during Easter on Holy Saturday, yeah. all the bells are ringing. It's yeah. like that is just so beautiful. Yeah. And I'm sure it happens on Easter Sunday yeah, too. Yeah, I think it's the So vigil, the, bells, yeah. uh, the bells ringing okay. uh, are so beautiful. And you, even um, as we go through uh, the services, you know, where they use the, the clapper, that, yeah. that snapping sound. Yeah. Oh, yeah. gosh, that always gets you. There's just so many beautiful moments that mm. ask the Lord as you enter in during this holy week, Lord, lift the veils from my eyes. Lord, unplug my ears if I'm being deaf. And Lord, I ask that you would soften my heart, that I would make room, that you could come in, Jesus, and help me to see and know and love you like I've never seen you and loved you before. And I pray that this would be the greatest holy week of your life and you would see him and know him and love him like you've never done before. Amen. I think we have another comment here. All righty. The Wednesday of Holy Week is very impactful for me. It calls to mind the betrayal of Judas Iscariot and makes me reflect on all the times in my life that I have betrayed our Lord and for less mm. than 30 pieces of silver at that. Mm. This is Mark from Connecticut. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good question. That's a good comment because we might be very strong in the Lord right now, but you know, you got to persevere to the end mm -hmm. and we have to ask the question, Lord, am I the one who's going to betray you, right? That's what was going on in the Last Supper, right? Who's the one who's going to betray you? Is, is it me, Lord? Is it this one? Lord, which one am I? Am, am I... Am I St. John? Am I like Mary? Am I like the other Mary that was there? Mm -hmm. Or am I Judas? I know what I was then. What am I going to be now? Where are we going? And that kind of reality and knowing our dependency upon the Lord uh, means so very much. Thanks for your comments. There's plenty more to come. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, thank you for all of your comments today. We always love to hear from you. And before we wrap up today's show, we're going to go to beautiful Joan Lewis to find out what's happening in the church. Joan, what's the latest news from Rome? One show now, Jim and Joy. Well, as of yesterday, Palm Sunday, we are, of course, officially into Holy Week, a week both somber and joyful that is filled with liturgies especially the Triduum. So the Mass of the Last Supper, institution of the Eucharist, institution of the priesthood. We get then to the passion and death of Christ on the cross and of course to his glorious resurrection. Now, Palm Sunday is always a very evocative ceremony, very beautiful. Perhaps no place more so than St. Peter's Square, 
the majestic square inside Vatican City. And yesterday, 60,000 people attended the Papal Mass for Palm Sunday. There were over 30 cardinals, there were 25 bishops, and about 350 priests who all processed around the area of the obelisk right up to the main altar. And interesting, it was very beautiful because the cardinals are vested in red and they carry what are called parmorelli. These are very tall, intricately woven uh, palm branches. And the public, some of the public, a couple hundred faithful, also processed with palm branches and olive branches. Now, <clears throat> given his mobility and other issues, the Holy Father was already seated in a chair in front of the papal altar. Now, he did read a brief opening prayer, but it was in a somewhat weak voice, and you could hear breathing problems through the microphone. And what was really quite remarkable, however, for the first time in memory of all of those of us who cover such live papal events, the Holy Father did not deliver a homily. There was no aide who read one in his stead, and the Holy See Press Office never made a comment as to why. So several minutes of silence instead filled that time. Now afterwards, the Holy Father did rise briefly for a final prayer, and he also delivered the Angelus and some reflections to the faithful. He said, I assure my prayers for the victims of the vile terrorist attack carried out the other evening in Moscow at a concert. May the Lord convert the hearts of those who plan, organize, and carry out these inhuman actions, which of course offend God who commanded thou shalt not kill. Now, the Holy Father also highlighted what he called and has called in the past martyred Ukraine. He said, so many people are without electricity due to intense attacks against infrastructure, which besides causing death and suffering, raise the risk of an even greater humanitarian crisis. And he said, let us also think of Gaza, which is suffering greatly along with other places of war. So, so here we are, we're in Holy Week on a very intense time of year. And let's pray for the Holy Father because he has a very intense Holy Week schedule. So time's up here, back to you. Joan, thanks so much for those updates. Join us next time for an exciting conversation with Dr. John Sotosante. He will, we will hear about his incredible conversion story, his search for happiness, and the journey we must all take from sin and towards God's saving truth. May this Holy Week be the most special of your life. May you walk the way with Christ, and may you hear him say to you, you too, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me, that we might have a resurrection unto eternal life like his. Don't be afraid. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.